So this is more like the metal that we are going to go for. But we are going to make it quite a bit shinier. Um, a bit like this. But in the, this environment, the thing with this one. So the shine works. But because of the lighting, it's a bit hard to see anything. So we, of course, will properly balance it out. So knowing that, let's go ahead and go over here. So first, we are going to go for our base materials. And if I just have a look. So we want to go for, let's say, a dark metal, uh, chrome. Um, another variation of dark metal, a light, cables, and I believe that is about it, so for at least the base materials. So let's create a folder, and we are going to call this folder base materials, there we go. And now in here, I just want to go ahead and let's go into our smart materials, I most of the time use the smart materials, and we are just going to go ahead and have a look around. So I think I already had this in mind, the steel painted clear coat. I think that one will work quite well for our base metal. But um, we can, what you can do is you can just drag it in. You can give it a quick look like this one. It works quite well, but of course we have this. Um, the mask is not looking too good. So we can just go ahead and we can, for example, let's try steel dark. Let's see how, what that looks like. Get rid of the clicker. Mm, steel dark. It is cool that it adds like this occlusion, but it's a bit strong. Also, by the way, let's go ahead and go to our settings and make sure that this is set to 2048. Because once we start adding all these textures, that's where things start to slow down quite a bit. So we do want to be careful with that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go for... Um, let's go ahead and try something else. Uh, so we have the steel painted, but steel paint is probably just going to be dull. Yeah, it is. So I quite like the steel dark. We have two variations, aged and stained. Let's. So this is aged. And what is stained like? Stained is... Okay, so, so I quite like the steel dark aged, something like this. But then, of course, we do need to play around with things a bit. So if we go and... Because this is just a folder... We have our scratches over here. Okay, so our scratches are the ones that take care of uh, the softness. Which is good to know because what we can do is we can just go in here. And we can probably just go ahead and set our base color a bit darker. To tone things down a bit. Now for our metal. Our metal shows a little bit of rust. Which is not something we want in a sci-fi environment. We are more going to go for like dust. So... We have down here, we have our basic parameters and our advanced parameters. And often in the advanced parameters, you can just change your settings like the colors, the roughness. So we can, for example, set our roughness a bit stronger like this. So we have quite a strong roughness. Now our rust, let's turn it off. There we go. And we do have dirt intensities, although I think the dirt intensity is what you see over here. So actually, yeah, so we are probably able to use this and we will do some roughness variations later on so this is just a because this is of course just a base uh, dirt scale i'm not too worried about that surface imperfections okay so surface imperfections adds like these little dots but again it's not something i want to do right now and the color noisiness is also one that i quite like so let's go for something like this so this dark steel maybe make it a little bit brighter because our lighting will also be a bit dark so of course later on oh it's too bright sorry set the normal form to OpenGL but later on we are we, once we are in Unreal we will probably need to do another pass where we will actually balance everything out based upon Unreal so let's say we have something like this now what you can do because this is just a folder is we can add more stuff to this so what I like to do is I like to always just go ahead and add a fill layer. And let's call this roughness var for variation. And I'm going to go ahead and only turn on the roughness. So just turn everything else off. And now in our roughness, what we can do is we can simply go to branches. And we can just grab something that looks a bit interesting. Maybe like concrete burnt. And that will just give us some variation so right now it's really strong 
But um, that's good because I just want to drag a few on. Let's try this one. No. So just go by feel, see what you want. Uh, maybe, maybe we just want to go for something that's a bit more subtle. So let's have a look. Um, that looks quite cool. So this one is grunge wipe directional heavy. That one looks quite cool. Now, as you can see, the, the it, right now it just breaks everything a little bit. First of all, let's just go ahead and play around with our balance. Well, I guess our balance is pretty much fine. So this is in our roughness. Now, probably what we should have done is actually, let's remove this. Let's actually add a mask. And now you cannot drag on this crunch on your mask, but what you can do is you can go down here and add a paint layer. And this is almost like an extra layer on top of your crunch map. Oh, sorry, paint. Fill layer. Add a fill layer. It's like an extra fill layer on top of your crunch map. And drag it in there. And doing that, now we still have control over our roughness. So we can make our roughness completely dull, for example. But then in here we still have control over our crunch. So knowing that, I'm going to set my roughness to be, this one is probably going to be duller than the rest. So I'm just going to go ahead and just give it like some extra dullness. Play around with your slider until you get something you like. And it's more like a bit less. It's just going to be like a subtle something. It's better to see over here. So let's say that that's the first one that you want to do. It's mostly over here. Here the steel works quite nicely. Now... We can just hide this folder and we can continue with the next one and the next one. Let's just go for an easy one, which is some chrome. So if we go to our, I think we just need to go to materials for this. We don't need, we need um, anything else. Let's go for cobalt pure over here. And I'm just going to make the color like more of like a very light bluish tone and just set the roughness to be quite shiny something like this and now in order to select everything what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to click on here and add a black mask and then if you go to our polygon select this time we want to keep it on face selection and keep it on white and then you can just click and drag like that and that will add the cobalt there we go so that's a very quick and easy way to just add some new materials now that we have done that, one thing we do need to be careful about later on also is that um, because this material is, no, is not masked because we, are, we would need to select quite a few pieces. What will probably happen is you, the norm maps in this material, if you add another material to it, the norm maps will be doubled. Meaning if this cobalt would have had like a very strong norm map, you would see both the norm map for our black metal and the norm map for our chrome uh, on the same time. But if we counter it, which we probably will, then I will properly show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for some cables. And let's go ahead and add some color in there. So let's go for some... Uh, let's add a fill layer. And let's go for some blue. And we can turn off the height. Normal, emissive, we can set our roughness a bit higher, so this one is going to be like a bit of like a bluish color, maybe like quite a dull blue color, there we go. And then another one that is going to be, let's say, shall we go for yellow, let's try yellow, and this one is just going to be like a bit more of like a dull Yellow color. We'll give it a try. And um, let's go for. I oh, know, you know what? For the rubber, we are going to go for something a bit more special. Let's go to our smart materials and just grab rubber, which should be in here. So here we go. Rubber dry. Let's go for that. There we go. So having these materials, let's add a black mask to all of them. Like this. And let's get started with the rubber. So with the rubber, again, just go to your polygon select. And this time we can just select element. 
And we can, for the rubber, let's just make the bigger cables out of rubber. Now for the yellow, we can probably just go ahead and, actually, you know what, let's make this cable also rubber and this one also. Sometimes it takes a few clicks to select it. So for the yellow, let's just have one of these yellow and blue, one of these blue. Now let's go to the other side and do the same. So let's go for blue and yellow. There we go. And that will just add that little bit of an extra color when you are looking at it. Of course, when, once you have edge, edge scratches and everything, things will look a lot more interesting. So we have done that one. Uh, what's the next one going to be? It's probably going to be our lights. Because most of this should be like quite a plain metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look and let's go down here. Let's make a folder that we will call lights. And in here we are going to go ahead for a fill layer. Blue lights. So fill layer that is blue lights. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let's make this a color that you want. So we want to make this more like a bit of like a baby blue kind of light. So let's go for something like this. And for this one, the roughness we want to set quite high. We do not need the height. We do not need it normal. For the emissive, we do want to go ahead and we want to go ahead and in the emissive also set this to be like well, actually pretty much just grab the same blue light. So for the emissive, it will shine a little bit bluish. Let's make this a little bit more. There we go. And first of all, what we want to do is let's go into our lights. Uh, just a folder, I mean. And add a black mask. And now if you go ahead and go into select. And oh, looks like that this light thinks it's part of it. Let's go to... Um, UV select and this way because we separated this UV we can also select by UV islands which is very easy because it means that we can just go ahead and select these pieces like this there we go so now we have these blue lights now the next thing that I want to do is I probably want to go ahead and make something a little bit more interesting with this so let's go ahead and start by adding some normal details so let's just make a folder or make an fill layer that we will call normal and this one just has some height in it here we go and for this height we are going to go ahead and add a let's make this in or outwards let's add a black mask and to this black mask let, let's add a fill layer and for this fill layer we are going to go ahead into procedurals because if into procedurals we can have like a bit more of like interesting Although actually, you know what, I can remember that being, if we just go on the fill layer, I just want to test out if we go to add a filter and try our matte finish hammered or raw. Ah, that's too bad. So never mind. Uh, ignore what I just did. It's because we don't have a base color, it will not really work. So let's just try it again. So fill layer. And we are just going to go for like some wobbleness on our... So if we just set this quite a bit high, higher in the scale, the scale is basically the UV tiling. Um, no, that's too smooth. Let's go for something that's a bit sharper. Let's try this. Uh, doesn't look what I want. I'm just dragging on some random pieces until I get something that I think will look nice but I have a feeling that this is not there we go that's that's more what I had in mind so this is a fabric star block so yeah, you can find the things you want in the craziest materials so for the scale let's set this to 256 uh, it doesn't allow us to tile it anymore which is well, actually, no, we can tile it like this. 
and that's why it doesn't allow us to dial it because it can no longer see what we're doing. So let's just go for 256 and we just want to set this like very, very softly. There we go. So it's just going to be like even, even softer. So let's go for 0 0.01 and it's just going to be like some deformation. Let's go even lower 0 0.005. There we go. That just gets like the tiniest bit of deformation. So let's try something like this. And now having like some base colors over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my scene and I am going to go ahead and this should all be fine. So we can just go ahead and re-export this again. There we go. And now remember the scene that we set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just file and do a save as. There we go. And in our saves. Yeah, let's do this in the. No, wait, let's do this in the textures folder. Let's create another scene. And this time it's going to be asset render. And the reason I make another folder is because for these ones, I'm not going to do all the duplicating. I want to see them on their own. So let's just delete all of our copies. So that all that we have left is our bases and I'm just going to turn everything off except for our door for the or in this case. So here is our door. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, we are running out of time actually. So I will just quickly in our door start by dragging these, dragging in all the exported textures. So in the final and we can just drag in the AO base color, metallic, normal, and roughness, and it looks like it's really dark, so, but that's also because we set our sky to, so let's set the sky back to one, so in the next chapter we will balance this scene out a little bit, so that we can see what we're doing, and um, yeah, we will just continue making this nice, and then we will continue with our texture.